food's going to go and hopefully they go for it. If not, I'll uh, move it along. Okay, are we ready? I'm going to start with this one on the edge here. Let's see where he goes. Shall we try it again? Alright, let's try again. Are we ready? What's where the food goes? I think the one behind him was hungry. <laughs> Still makes me jump every time. Oh, that pretty quick little mouths. Alright guys, any questions about them? How big do they grow? See that fat one there? These are incredibly fat stonefish. This is probably the maximum size that they get. Um, they're, they're, I would say normally they're a little bit smaller, so our smallest one in here, I think, is one of the ones at the front here. That's probably a more likely size. So lying about halfway down their tails, lots of people think it is at the end of their tail, but it is about halfway down. They have a couple of arms. Both arms are the only calcified part of their body. They're also shaped like an arrow, and unfortunately they are venomous. So if you do get the bark from a stingray in your leg, because of the arrow shape, you don't want to pull it out. If you pull it out, you'll do more damage, so you leave it in there. You treat it with hot water, just like a stonefish, and you get yourself off. Shimmery skin, guys. Keep an eye out for it. 
Bichette are expert animals. Unlike us, we're mammals. Mammals maintain a body temperature. Sharks actually don't maintain a body temperature. The temperature that the ocean is and their environment is, is the temperature that they are. Okay, well I'm hoping by the end of this talk I'll completely change your mind about them. Now just while I've got Pedro here, I'm going to show you how he differs from a land snake. So sea snakes have really small heads, causes less friction when they're going through the water. They have thick muscular backs, just like a land snake. But have a look at his belly everybody, have a look at his belly. Look at that guys, tapers down into a nice point. Great for going through the water, not so good if he goes on land. He'll just flop from either side. So sea snakes, the majority of them, can't go on land, everyone. And look at his tail, just like a paddle. Great for guiding through the water. Fish, so there isn't too much known about them. We know they're very nocturnal animals, so it's pretty cool we're seeing him in the daytime. Usually he's hiding. And we do know they are directly related to stonefish. So they still have those nasty, venomous barbs you don't want to touch a frogfish, everyone. Don't go touching one. Now, on to Mr. Estuary Cod over here. Notoriously very lazy fish. Usually just plonk themselves down on top of the eels, uses them as a pillow. And we've got him in here because out in the ocean, lots of different species have what we call symbiotic relationships with other species. Now, this big, long, dark one has a nice, high dorsal fin down its back. This one going for the food. I'll talk about the other ones first. This one here has a leopard pattern, so they've called it our, a leopard. We've got this one here with a grey face, so they called it a grey face. These are really original <laughs> names, guys. And underneath this brown one has one long fang, so they called it the long fang. Love the names. Now, these guys are very ferocious predators in their habitats, and they love hanging out in rock structures right on the seafloor. So generally, you won't see them so exposed like this. You might just see a little face poking out doing that. Has anyone seen one in the wild? So they're not saying hi. They're not asking for food. That is how they are breathing. They vacuum in all the water around their mouth. They get the oxygen and, oh, you got it. <laughs> and expel it out through little gills on the side. They are so picky, guys. They prefer to eat the prawns peeled on my tour. So I'm gonna peel it for them. And you can see how there's prawns on the bottom of the tank from the last tour. They like to be hand fed. They won't eat from the bottom of the tank. Which I think is crazy because our last squid was the total opposite. So they do have a little bit of personality. It's pretty cool. All right, let's see. Now guys, if they do take this prawn, this tiny little bit, it is gonna take them over one hour to eat. They are slow eaters. Now this is because their brain is actually in the shape of a donut and then going straight through that middle hole is their digestive system. So if Declan or Walter Squidney eat something too fast or too big, Whoa. it can actually stretch out their brain and they can die from it as well. So they have to eat nice and slow. Come on. Now notice how they're going backwards and forwards guys. Right behind their eyes, in between the mandal, is a siphon. So they can actually use jet propulsion to go back, forwards. Um, I've seen Declan jump from this side of the tank out of the water to the other side of the tank. So they love jumping out of the water, which is pretty cool to see. They can also change colour. So just like cuttlefish, just like octopus, they change colour depending on their mood, um, camouflage. They can even mimic other animals. So a few nights ago, I walked through here, it was pitch black, 
I shined my torch on little Declan and he had all his tentacles up and then his whole body was covered in red and white stripes. So we're thinking guys, out in the ocean, he must have seen a lionfish and weeks later when he's in here, he's remembered that and he was mim mimicking a lionfish the other night. Really, really cool.